Hi everyone, Roger Connect, President, Universal Accounting Center, and today we're gonna to be having a great conversation with Veronica. She happens to be the president and founder of BM Wasik. She's a CPA and as a uh, accounting firm, works with a number of accounting businesses, but she has a phenomenal story to share, and I think most importantly, some things that you'll all find very interesting. So welcome, Veronica, thanks for being with us today. Hi, Roger, and thank you for having me. Yeah, this is great. Now, Veronica, you and I have known one another kind of in passing for the last number of years. I've seen some exciting things that you've done recently, and so eventually I want to get to those, but I just want to thank you for the friendship and, and the interactions. It's always nice to find one another at conferences and see a familiar face, isn't it? Absolutely, and I, I think Facebook is largely responsible for you and I meeting, so that's, that's exciting how social media is doing so much to make our world smaller nowadays. I had have to agree with that. The, uh, the um, relationships that I have with people that I've actually never have met just because of the social media has been phenomenal. And then to actually run into so many of them now at the conferences has been great. So this is a, a wonderful next step. So let's start, first of all, with your background in history. Tell me about how you got started in accounting. What kind of drew you to the profession? Well, it's funny you should ask because um, I got an accounting degree, but it was on a dare, actually, <laughs> just kind of silly. But um, my best friend and I were going to the, the University of Houston. I wanted to study management information systems, and she was majoring in accounting and didn't want to do it alone and said, well, accounting is the most challenging and hardest uh, subject at the College of Business, and I thought, okay, I love a challenge, let's do accounting. But she, she had to explain the debits and credits to me because they didn't make sense. <laughs> well, you are the first who's ever said to me that you've gone through the training on a dare, that you chose a profession on a dare. I That's know, amazing. it's crazy. <laughs> <laughs> well, you've done phenomenal. So thank you for accepting the dare and most importantly, embracing it. So obviously on that dare, you went through the program or through the, the uh, school there, got your degree. Tell us about your background and experience. Um, sure. So I went to work for, uh, back in the day, it was called Coopers and Libran. Now it's PricewaterhouseCoopers, and that was just straight out of college. I worked for them for uh, four years. So I did the, the traditional stint of working in public accounting for four years. And then I went to work for a client and uh, then held positions in the corporate world as well as um, in public accounting, kind of flipping back and forth because I would get bored with doing each one. <laughs> Boredom set in. So that kind of pushed you to the next thing. That's kind of funny. All right. So with that, I'm curious, what's the love that came for accounting? What did you find that you enjoyed most about it? Uh, it's funny because I know I have been asked before, do I love accounting? And I, I know I have answered no, <laughs> that I don't, that I didn't love it. But I think for me, it's not so much the traditional accounting and the dealing with the numbers as much as it is an opportunity to solve problems and to improve uh, things. So whether it's improving accounting processes, implementing technology, uh, doing things more efficiently, and ultimately, and now what I see my role is in solving problems for our clients. So I think it's really more an opportunity to solve problems, to take the knowledge that we have and use it really outside of the accounting. So using the accounting as a foundation um, because accounting really touches so many areas in a business. So taking that foundation and then applying it to the operational side of a business. You know, that is wonderful. And one of the things that came to mind as you were sharing that is the friends that I have that are accounting professionals that love the games of like Sudoku or puzzles, that, that's something they just naturally are drawn to and find joy in. So as you're describing that process, that's one of the things that came to my mind. Now, one of the things that I want to hear then is what drew you to then starting your own business? Yes, I'm really an accidental entrepreneur <laughs> because I didn't ever see myself as starting my own business, but uh, the Great Recession had other plans for me. So in, in 2008, I lost a job, um, had uh, reached a, a fairly high level in my career, really wanted to then transition into being a CFO, but the, the recession happened 
lost that job. Um, I went to work in public accounting. I figured, okay, I'll do auditing again. Surely companies need audits. Well, I was wrong. <laughs> and so eight months later, lost that job. And I really didn't want to be in a situation working in the corporate world where I wouldn't have resources as a controller or a county manager. Um, I wouldn't have the resources to really do get my work done and, and have people to support me. And I thought, well, I really don't have anything left to lose. I think I'll start my own business. And so that's how it happened. It was just very accidental, really um, rein, reinventing, I think, many of us in two th from 2008 forward as, as being products of the, the Great Recession. We're reinventing ourselves and finding new ways to, to really make a living because it, it was tough uh, for many of us. You know, I think that is a story that many can identify with. And whether it be specifically back in that recession period or even more recently, I do find that there are a number of people who aren't necessarily drawn to starting their own accounting business simply because that's a passion or something they had on their bucket list that they ultimately wanted to become that entrepreneur. Uh, most accounting professionals do have that risk aversion. And so to find themselves all of a sudden now branching out on their own, starting their own business, needing to go outside of the comfort of just doing the work to now finding clients and working with business owners. It is that stretch, but it's something that so many have done. And like you explained, sometimes it's not out of want, it's out of necessity that you're driven there. And really, sometimes that's the, the biggest catalyst to success is you've got to make this happen and therefore you do everything to make it a success. So congratulations on you know taking that risk and making the most of it like you have. So here's the question that I think is appropriate at this point, which is, having experienced what you did and gone through what you had, what advice would you have for someone who's in that position of starting their own business or considering going out and having uh, clients of their own? Um, yes, that's a great question. And I think number one, and it, it is the, the thing that I experienced the most was fear and insecurity and, and what am I going to do? And when I started, we didn't have Facebook groups. We didn't you know, YouTube wasn't what it is today. There's so many more tools and, and content now to help you, but, but just get past the fear and the insecurity and the self-limiting thoughts and do it anyway. I mean, that's what I had to do. Just do it anyway. Act like as if you have no choice. And second is educate yourself. You have to have the training. Um, I'm a big believer in training and certifications and positioning myself as an expert that has helped me tremendously in my business of positioning myself as an expert differentiating uh, myself it, 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 and that would be another piece of advice be different do something different find um, find a way to communicate what you do differently than just I do bookkeeping I do accounting I do taxes uh, think about really what your your prospective client values what what do they value and it's mostly emotion emotional whether it's um, they want peace of mind they want to um, to know that their books are are clean so they can rely on the on the numbers so they can grow their business so they can sleep at night um, they want to work with an expert and feel like um, somebody's taking care of them and and paying attention to them, answering their questions, even returning their phone calls. I mean, just even small things that you can do to differentiate yourself, to be different from everyone else. Because I have a saying, Roger, if you don't um, differentiate yourself, all you can compete on is price. So well, those would be my, my biggest um, pieces of advice for someone starting. That is great advice because you're right. When it comes to marketing your services and finding clients, you've got to say more than you're an accountant or a bookkeeper. Those come not so much with stereotypes, do I want to say, but they do come with this understanding of, okay, well, I, I think I know what you do. And I think that how that 
will benefit me or, or, or work with my business as such. And so what we want to do is break through that paradigm and really help them realize that we have so much more to offer as accounting professionals and really can make a difference in their business. And when you can differentiate yourself, as you described, when you can specialize, many speak of going into niches, all of these things enable you to resonate more comfortably with your potential client base. And especially if you're appealing to your ideal clients, really give them reason to think that you're the expert that they need to help them run their businesses more profitably and successfully. So very very well said. Um, the other thing I think that, that you uh, mentioned that I would agree with is that this is an emotional sale. Uh, so mm -hmm. much of the sale actually occurs where clients are doing business with you, not so much because of the skill sets you have, but it's because of the rapport that you have. You're helping them feel at ease talking about their business. They're comfortable bringing up things that they may not be sharing with other individuals, but yet you know, you're the accountant, you know the cash flow, you know the financial situation. And then the other thing that I love that you shared is the fact that for the essence of confidence, the ability to hold your head high and look a business owner in the eye and say, I can take care of your business, that oftentimes does require getting the training, the certifications, so that you know you can offer the premier services that your client needs. You're not winging it, you're providing a quality mm -hmm. service that they're paying for and they have that expectation and so that's very important. So seeing you at the conferences, I know you take seriously staying on the cutting edge, being mm -hmm. relevant. I know at the conferences and speaking to you, you value kind of keeping that edge about yourself so that you are differentiated as having the expertise about you. All that's wonderful, that's fascinating. So here's another question, you've grown your business, you have the clients that you've had, can you share with us a story that uh, really kind of emanates from your helping make a difference in your client's uh, business? A success story of how you impacted a business for the better and how they appreciated the services they received from you. Absolutely, and there's so many I could tell you about, um, but there is one in particular that really resonates with me and it's because of a client that is, was a victim of embezzlement which turns my stomach every time that I hear that that happens because it, it's just so, I think it's just so horrible when someone violates that, that trust. Um, but this is a client that had an $8 million embezzlement oh my uh, over a few years. And the, this was their in-house bookkeeper that perpetrated the embezzlement. Um, she had, I think, five or six different QuickBooks files set up uh, for one legal entity. So she, she had everything so co confused and convoluted that the, the uh, company owners couldn't make sense of it. And I said she was busy all the time. <laughs> she was busy Photoshopping bank statements and things and just taking money from the company. So thankfully, they found that that was happening, dealt with that, got rid of her, of course. She's now in, in prison. But they hired me to first take all of the QuickBooks files and make one file out of it. So essentially, like, take the, the mess that she had created, make it one file, clean it up, and, and then help them to continue going forward um, it involved training their employees um, around best practices, internal controls. I mean, it was, you know, people were doing all kinds of, of things and, and had, I think they had 30 users on their, this was QuickBooks Enterprise, they had 30 users. Everyone was doing something in QuickBooks and to get all those people out, um, train everyone. And then they hired a new in-house bookkeeper, worked with her, trained her, helped them set up best practices. And over the years, just continued to work with them, reviewing their books, just providing um, help to them. And just to see them now, uh, several years later, how they have grown and how they're, the financial side of their business has really become so strong as compared to those, those years ago when it was just this giant mess and, and they, you know, they felt like victims. Now they feel in control of the financial side of their business. And it's just so rewarding to be able to, to have that impact on a company that um, they were just so victimized and, and it was just such a horrible thing. And, and I mean, just somebody to steal that much money is just unbelievable to me. 
Well, thank you for sharing that. I think it's something that we can identify with, if not just the, the embezzlement side of it, but the fact that there are businesses out there that need quality services and you've provided that. Uh, just on a, on a personal note, when you said it made you physically sick, you're right, hearing that story is sickening. Mm -hmm. And yeah. too often I've had that same experience working with business clients where they have just a horrible experience with the accounting profession. And so I think it just speaks to the need for us to offer quality services so we don't give a black eye to the profession. We can go out there and give the business owners the quality information they need to make more intelligent business decisions. And I'm sure that was a daunting task. I'm sure that was just kind of a overwhelming experience. But in the end, years later, look what you've accomplished. And I'm, I'm impressed that you've still got them as a client where you're obviously continuing to serve them and they see the value in it. And I'm sure they appreciate it after that whole embezzlement, embezzlement yeah. situation. Yeah. So here's a great question. What advice would you give to a business owner of an accounting firm, someone like yourself, a peer, who has found themselves wondering what next in their business. What advice would you give to a peer about their own accounting firm? If you've been in, in business for a while, um, I think we, we have to look at where are you in the business? So have you um, already um, implemented technology and apps into your business? And are you in the cloud? So that might be a step that you need to take to really modernize your business, modernize the way you do business. I think there are still many accounting firms doing business the, the old way, uh, very um, paper-based, uh, very inefficient. And so let's look at bringing in inefficient, uh, bringing rather efficiencies into your business. Uh, the other is um, your role in your business. What are you doing to really work on your business to be the the CEO of your business instead of being a worker in your business and whether you might be by yourself working by yourself what does that look like do you need to hire other people so you're not working so many hours and then the other is systematizing your business which is something that I have done over the years which has also helped me to be the, the CEO of my business and not a worker in my business is, is um, building out the systems and processes, finding uh, ways to work smarter and not harder, um, to really have a system in which my employees follow my system of doing business. And to, that makes it much easier for me to hire people, to train people, to run the business e efficiently because we're working around the systems and processes instead of each person being a, what I call a worker, like we're all just working um, and, and not really being efficient and organized in what you do. Very well said. You know, one of the things that we stress here at Universal Accounting Center is the idea of mapping the business and it's focusing on the three key areas of the uh, uh, elements that need to be in, in place in every business. And it's marketing, accounting, and production. Marketing being the means that you're going about to acquire the new clients, accounting, the services you're choosing to offer your clients in production, which is the efficiency that you mentioned as you're looking to onboard clients, do the work for the clients, and retain them as clients. So I like how you emphasize that you're trying to create an environment where you're not so uh, con, um, confined by the day-to-day -day operations. You're more managing the business and kind of liberating your employees with this workflow. So that's very well said. Um, here's one of the things that I'd like to now ask that I'm excited to hear your answer is, what do you think about the future of accounting? What do you see on the horizon? What's something that's catching your attention? Oh, goodness. Um, I think there's so much talk about things that are coming that I don't know if they're really coming as, as quickly as they're telling us, like artificial intelligence and, and machines replacing us. But what I see is um, an, an opportunity, opportunity not just to, to find a niche, but to find a micro niche. Mm. So to not just work with... Um, for say e-commerce sellers, for example, which is something I'm starting to do, but perhaps online sellers that use a particular app. So to really make it a whole lot smaller of a niche and just become very, 
very knowledgeable in that area. Um, the QuickBooks Live Bookkeeping, Bench, any of these other bookkeeping services don't, they can't compete with that because they're, they're going after the just general businesses, service-based businesses. They're not, they're, they won't be able to compete with that uh, level of, of expertise. I think the other is advisory. You know, there's a, you know, a whole discussion about advisory services, um, that there's a huge opportunity to do that, but we need to find what that means for each one of us. So instead of, of thinking that you're supposed to be doing this kind of advisory, that kind of advisory, finding what that, what that means to you, um, what is your level of expertise or knowledge that you have, what comes easier to you, um, in terms of having these, these discussions with clients, um, it might be operational, might be financial, might be technology, it might be just mindset, working with clients on mindset and accountability. So finding that, that one thing, I think, where you can make a big difference for your clients instead of trying to, to be all things to all people. I love how you describe that as being a micro niche. That, that, that niche is so incredible. And to be at that micro level, I think, is more important. So your example of, for example, e-commerce, you're right. I've spoken to people who focus not just on e-commerce, but it's people that use Etsy, for example, or who use yeah. ClickFunnels, or who do eBay or Amazon. And what they've become is the expert with that platform in yes. doing the accounting for them in that space. And so that's, that's very, very true. And when you're talking about advisory services, you're right. There are a number of people that choose to focus on specific areas and for some it gets them into more of the advisory role where they're doing exit strategies and selling the business or it's working with clients regarding uh, production and operational procedures uh, you're right there's that comfort level that you want to then emphasize with your strengths and really kind of be that that expert in that area not this jack of all trades in in kind of a broad way but a narrow way so i like how you described that that was very well said so what i'd like to do is bring up something that veronica and i are very excited to share here and it's first being announced and it's the fact that veronica you've in the uh, past little while created a virtual training program to help accounting professionals actually systematize their workflow and help with what they're doing in their back office. Can you share with everyone what it is you've created and what you're offering? Absolutely. So the name of my program is the Virtual Bookkeepers Roadmap. And it essentially teaches you virtual bookkeeping workflows and working smarter and, and creating systems for your accounting business. And it's basically um, everything that I have done, all the, the, uh, the trials and errors that I've gone through in determining what works and what doesn't and, and putting together my own system in, in my own business and teaching that to others. Uh, it includes uh, sections such as client onboarding, selecting your technology, monthly bookkeeping process, a monthly bookkeeping review process, managing your team, managing due dates, um, and, and much more. Um, also includes the checklist, the forms, and the tools that I have um, developed in my business. And again, everything is tried and, and tested. And um, it is just a, a, a holistic way for you to then um, build these, these systems and processes and really take what I have done and use it in your business without spending the years that it took, years and hundreds of, hundreds of thousands of dollars that it took me to build out my systems and processes. And the goal of, of doing this is not just for you to work efficiently and be organized, but really to build a business in which the, the, your systems and processes are at the heart of your business. You become the leader of your business, and then you have a team that's working with you. And again, everything revolves around the systems and processes, as opposed to what we typically see, which is the owner of the business is, is a worker, is doing all the work, and you just keep hiring more people to do more work. And then when people leave, you're stuck with having to continue to do all the work and there's really not, again, not, nothing efficient, 
uh, nothing documented for what that person was doing, whether they're doing it efficiently, whether you're using the right tools. So um, in a nutshell, it's, it's my entire way of doing business. I love it. Absolutely love it. One of the things that we really emphasize here at Universal Accounting Center is this principle of mapping the business. You heard me mention it earlier, marketing, accounting, and production. And production is truly where your efficiencies will turn into profitability. I usually don't challenge an accounting professional's ability to prepare proper or um, uh, correct financials, but I will challenge their abilities to do it efficiently because whether you produce quality financials in 10 hours or in 15 hours or 20 hours of time, that just determines how much you're earning because as you move away from an hourly fee to more of a flat or fixed rate fee, the more time it takes, the less you're making per hour. And so this is probably a deeper conversation than we have right now, but the point is, is what Veronica is offering is a great addition to helping you have within your production side of your business, the standard operating procedures, the workflow, the know-how of working efficiently so you can in fact get back your time. Time is probably the most valuable thing you have. And if you find yourself in your business working too many hours, working too many nights, working too many weekends, not having taken a vacation recently, this may be one of the very solutions you need to take your business to that next level, which is you still have the same clients, you're still doing the same work, you're still making the same amount of money, but now all of a sudden you're doing it more efficiently. And as she described, you're able to also train your staff, get them to work efficiently so that they can also follow the same workflow. And whether they come or go or not, the same procedures are in place for you to do the work efficiently. So very well said, and I, I really like this. What we're going to be doing is sharing some information about this below in the description so that you can learn more and take advantage of this wonderful opportunity to really add to your business perhaps the very things you need to improve your profitability, your enjoyment in the work, but also improve the relationships you have with your clients because you're going to be able to then pass this through to them, giving them the information they need in a very relevant way. So here's the last thing I'd like to ask Veronica, what parting thoughts would you like to share? What more would you like to add to this conversation? I would just want to encourage everyone to, um, to really grow, um, well, number one, I think is, you know, again, going back to that, that fear and insecurity that we all feel. And I think we, we each think we must be the only one who's afraid or insecure. Um, I was extremely afraid when I started my business. I'm very insecure, even though I had 20 plus years of accounting experience. I am a, you know, I'm a CPA. I had all the training and background, but it's still very natural to feel um, that level of insecurity when we're starting a business or even looking at um, additional ventures or investing in our business, investing in ourselves. There's always that, that fear. Um, and I think it's just natural for, for our profession. Or like you said, Roger, we're very um, um, adverse to, to risk. <laughs> and, uh, but in order to grow your business, to expand your business, to expand yourself and grow yourself, you need to, number one, feel the fear, do it anyway. Number two is gain the, the knowledge and expertise that, that you need um, through training, um, through certifications, through just being around other professionals, some of the conferences. I, mean, I, th I think that has been instrumental for me in what I've done in my business, in, in um, being able to, to grow it and position my business as you know, being QuickBooks Online Experts is, is developing all that knowledge and, and getting um, the training to go with it. Very well said. Yeah, one of the things that I also agree with is that there is that need to kind of push yourself outside of your comfort zone. And one of the things that Universal Accounting Center that we've done to try and help with that is every single one of our programs that we offer come with assigned coaches, as many as two or three coaches that you work with that are essentially your mentors. They're functioning practicing accounting professionals with their own firms and with their own businesses. They can give you insights and perspectives that they can provide because they're doing exactly what each of you are doing as you're in your process of growing and building your firms. And this is the same for this program that we're discussing with Veronica. You get access to practicing accounting professionals and peers that are also similar to you 
in a similar situation growing your business. And so that's a powerful point is being in business for yourself, but not being by yourself is one of the things that we've been saying for years here at Universal Accounting Center. And that's what I think this is doing with Veronica's program as well. So with that in mind, just remember this, if it's about accounting, it's universal. Beneath in the description, you're going to find additional information about these resources and some of the things we've talked about in today's conversation. But Veronica, thank you for taking the time to share all this. I loved your story. You've been on an amazing journey and you've done very, very well. So thank you for being here today. Thank you, Roger. Have a wonderful day. Thanks. You bet. Bye-bye.